And for our last esteemed speaker of the evening, please welcome Port Commission President Ryan Calkins from the Port of Seattle. Thank you, Annie, and thank you to the sponsors as well. I also just want to uh, have us all give a round of applause to the workers who are serving us dinner tonight. They are making this <laughs> extraordinary event. And then I'm, because you guys have, have patiently uh, listened to a lot of information, I'm going to ask you all to stand up. <laughs> We're going to go through a little exercise here. It's about the port, Everybody. so it's a little self-centered on my part, but stand up if you're able. You're like a preacher right now. And I'm going to ask you to take a seat if, in the last year, have you taken a cruise to Alaska? Anybody taken a cruise to Alaska? Well, you should, but OK. Uh, next, I'm going to ask you to sit if you've eaten wild-caught salmon. Okay, I figured that would, that would cover quite a few folks. All right, if you're still standing, if you're still standing, please, please sit if you have taken a flight from SEA, from SeaTac International Airport. <laughs> oh, they take it now, eh? And finally, if anybody is still standing at this point, if you've ordered anything online, you can be seated. And my point in all of this <laughs> is that if you've done any of those things, you have relied on the Port of Seattle to make that happen. Uh, we are an institution, and, and likely for many of you, that's monthly, weekly, or even daily, if you're like our household with Amazon, you're constantly ordering stuff online. Uh, but we are an institution that we all rely on all the time, and uh, we are continuing to try to do that as a people-centered institution. So uh, I'm going to try to run through. The, they gave me a half an hour. I'm going to try to make it in 29 minutes so we can get through this. I'm kidding, guys. They gave me the same time they gave the mayors. So there's just a lot of information, and I think it's all really important. So the Port of Seattle is uh, our North Star are these six goals here. We call them our Century Agenda goals. We updated them a couple of years ago. Uh, but you can see that they cover all the things that you would expect out of a port, as well as some things that hopefully you'd be surprised to see too, that we are really striving to be the, the greenest and most energy efficient port in North America. And we want to be a model for equity, diversity, and inclusion. One of my favorite additions recently was our executive director really emphasized this need to be a highly effective public agency, kind of a, a hybrid where we have these business lines that I'll talk about next that operate like businesses, but we're also a public agency that relies on some tax levy money to do some things that wouldn't otherwise happen in the market. So as a reminder of what we do, and in this room, I don't think it's any surprise, we run Seattle Tacoma International Airport. Sometimes that's the first thing a port commissioner has to do is remind people that we run SEA. Uh, but along with that, when people think of the port, they certainly think of the maritime cargo aspect of that. We do a part of that in conjunction with the Port of Tacoma, the big container terminals we run as a group called the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Of course, we also have commercial fishing and moorage, the recreational boating facilities like Shill Shoal. And finally, our uh, fourth line of business is real estate and cruise. And uh, we do own a lot of land in King County. Uh, you can see that our economic impact is, is pretty big. Um, I think the most important for me is those 121,200 jobs. Port jobs are great jobs. They're jobs like longshore workers, baggage handlers, airline pilots, commercial fishermen, uh, naval architects. Uh, and as you can see, we also cover quite a bit of land. That green on the left, that's Shoshul Marina. The big green on the right is the airport. Lots of property in between. Uh, I'm going to try to cover three things tonight. Bouncing back from the pandemic, what it means to be a green port, and, and some of the upgrades and changes to SEA. So one of the things we did during the pandemic was run a series of listening sessions. And I imagine some of you in this room were a part of those listening sessions. It was prompted by Commissioner Sam Cho, and it turned out to be an extraordinary exercise in learning how do we craft a budget? How do we use the kind of relief funds that we got the, from the federal government to make the greatest impact on our communities? And you'll see, it was a rough time for us. Uh, you, you can see 9-11, there was a little dip. Great Recession, there's a little dip, and these are, passengers at the airport, look at that dip. And keep in mind that of those 20 million passengers in 2020, about 10 million of them happened before the pandemic. So in those three months, January, February, March, we had about 10 million passengers, 10 million the remaining nine months of the year. So 
it was an extraordinary drop for us. You can see that for 2022, we're coming, we're bouncing right back. Uh, it is not the same mix of passengers that we had before the pandemic, but if anybody wants to ask me about that, that's a whole hour's worth of discussion as well. Um, for now, we are really excited to, to note that we are truly restoring operations at the airport, at cruise, in our air cargo and maritime cargo. Uh, you can see in just our cruise season, that 296 ship calls, that's about a 25% increase over 2019 pre-pandemic. We had many, many more ship calls this year, in part because we were open for business and other places were not. For us, I think top line, it, it's important to remember just how big an impact we have in the region. And I want you to look at that bottom number, that $4.4 billion in capital improvement plan over the next five years. That means lots of skilled tradespeople working. That means lots of folks who are supplying the, the steel for our projects or who are uh, working to develop the workforce that we need to carry all that out. That is an enormous investment in our community. I also want to call out somebody who did not, who should have gotten a call out earlier, and that's Aaron Garcia, who is here tonight. He is a member of the Highland School Board. And, and the reason I mention him here is because it is honestly the hardest job in politics, what he does as a school board director. And we had ha we've had the opportunity to work with, a, with Highland Public Schools to develop Maritime High School as part of that workforce and community related programs and lots of other things because the port has recognized for the last few years that workforce development is actually central to our mission. And I think we've all heard the news reports about how hard it is right now to find good workforce for our institutions. We've got 2,200 uh, employees at the port. We're closely following our airline and seaport partners. It's tough right now. And although they say, when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago, the second best time is right now. We're investing now in workforce development so that things like that crunch on the waterfront and at the airport don't persist. In terms of our green initiatives, uh, I am truly proud of the leadership that the Port of Seattle has made. And, and around here, it's sort of run of the mill. We're all really focused on sustainability, but when you compare us to peer ports around the country and around the world, we are head and shoulders above where other ports are, are headed, both on the seaport and the airport side of things. Lots to talk about in terms of exciting things that we're doing. I think some of the greatest impact for the next generation will be the introduction of sustainable aviation fuels and the use of hydrogen in our green economy. And the Port of Seattle is going to be a conduit for those things. Not only are we creating a market for it, but we're pushing our partners to take an aggressive stand. And Alaska, our sponsor tonight, is honestly, quite honestly, the lead airline globally in terms of pursuing sustainable aviation fuels and other zero emissions flights. Uh, one of my proudest achievements over the last year is this initiation of a green corridor from here up to Alaska. That's our cruise corridor. You can see in that logo map there, the partners that we've gotten to join us as first movers. Our goal is zero emissions cruise from here to Alaska. Uh, we're the largest and fastest growing cruise market on the west coast and we want to be able to keep that position and do it sustainably so we're moving fast on that one thing i i want you, there's sort of a, a door prize in my speech and that is i need you to pull out your phone right now which is normally kind of weird to pull out your phone during a, a, a speaker but over on the right hand side that sea app that I'm giving you a gift by having you download that onto your phone right now. If you don't already have, does anybody in the room have it besides me and the port employees? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so if you have it, you know that is like a free pass to a bunch of cool stuff at the airport. And I know we were in the news recently because the lines got really long because everybody wanted to travel. On there is one of the things that you can find is, is the spot saver, that second little logo there. That is an opportunity. When you check in for your flight 24 hours in advance, you can then check in for Spot Saver, which gives you a, a time in the queue when you show up and there's no line. You just walk right up to the front of the queue and you go in because you have your appointment then. So download the app. Next time you travel, use Spot Saver to get through. Okay? You're welcome. Price of admission right there. <laughs> uh, at the airport, we have lots of exciting new things, including dining and retail options. The, the port employees. And the airport employees love Wendy's the most because they love to have their frosty. You've probably heard some news about 
uh, our new concourse, the new North Satellite Concourse, the International Rivals Facility, a couple of billion dollar projects that, that recently we cut the tape on, and the cell phone lot improvements, which are great for all of us who need to pick up loved ones at the airport. Uh, and finally, if you're parking at the airport, uh, you can now use our automated guidance system to, to find a spot. I'm going to blow right through this time. No, I'm so lots more to come in our capital improvement plan. Uh, I hope you all get a chance to travel through SEA soon. The big, great, exciting news is that this last year we were voted North America's number one airport in a customer uh, satisfaction survey. So, first time. <laughs>